Welcome to a episode of Making Haiku Your Maker Tool, uh, where we're going to have some tutorials on how to make cool stuff in Haiku. Today we're going to go over path morphing. It's a new feature we dropped into the app recently. It still has a few rough edges, but it's working really well, and we're pretty pleased with it. Um, Haiku is one of the very few visual design tools that you can actually do this and animate it in a way that the end result is something you can drop into a production code base. So um, that's pretty exciting. Let's go ahead and jump into this example or take a peek at the, the final product. As you can see here, the, uh, the play button, the play triangle icon is actually morphing into the left pillar of this pause icon. And so this is what we're gonna be making in this tutorial. It shouldn't be too hard. Let's see if we can knock it out. Let's go back to the dashboard and start from scratch. More tutorial. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy these assets from the original file. And then here in the fresh blank file in, Sket in uh, Haiku, we're going to create a sketch file that is synced with it. I'm going to just select all the layers that are in there. Those are just instructions that come automatically. Uh, and I'm going to paste in these layers from the, the, uh, the finished file. So as you notice here, we already have these layers marked for export. Just know that if you're new to Haiku, you're going to need to manually mark layers for export via the, the bottom right panel in sketch but I've already prepared this and they're ready to go. So uh, if I save this and jump back to Haiku, we will see these layers in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and compose the design. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how the, the layout looks here. Um, we will actually be starting with this button in a non-playing state. So we won't be seeing this pause icon. We will be seeing a play triangular icon instead. Um, but as we uh, walk through earlier, we're going to use one of the pillars to um, create that shape. So it doesn't really matter which one, but we're going to use the, the left pillar. Uh, but we know that we're going to want to end up in this, this visual state here with the play icon, how it is now. So let's go ahead and arbitrarily say that that's out here at frame 18. Um, so we need to create keyframes here on the path so we know know what to um, transform into. Uh, so we do that here on, actually, let's go ahead and see. So this is the one we're actually gonna morph. Um, I'm gonna change the name just to uh, morph, so we know which one we're editing. So we're going to need to add the points of this, this shape, so we'll do that through the, the add menu here, and then we'll come over to points and that will create this set of points on this polygon uh, here within the, the morph layer. So we will just go ahead and open this up and click enter, and that created a keyframe out here on frame 18. And that's where we're gonna end up. It's gonna look just like that when we finish. So then we're gonna go back to the start and create our triangle from there. And then we will um, morph that shape into it um, with a transition. I'm also gonna add a little bit of rotation to this uh, morph layer as well. So uh, I know that's gonna be Z, so I'm just gonna create a keyframe out here because I know we're gonna end up there as well. And then on the other pillar of the play icon, um, it will be opacity one when we finish, but uh, until then it'll be opacity zero. So when we're at time zero, um, we won't be able to see that pillar. So that's just a little bit of setup work we need to do first. But now that we have the points exposed, um, we'll go ahead and adjust those for the beginning state. Uh, as I said earlier, um, we're going to rotate this a little bit uh, at the beginning. So let's go ahead and do that first. I'm gonna rotate this uh, just about negative 90 degrees, and then we'll create the shape from here. So to edit a shape's vertices or points, you just need to double click it and then you're in direct selection mode. We are going to um, go ahead and 
just change these points around to look a little bit more like a triangle. And I think we're going to do this in a way that gives it a nice nice motion uh, as well. So I know we're, we're going to end up uh, adjusting the position as well. So I'm going to create a few more keyframes here for the final position. And then we're going to then at the start move this to the center. Um, and let's zoom in a little bit here. This looks a little bit off. And then this could be a little, a little bit bigger. And then we'll leave direct selection mode and uh, move this over a little bit. So that's looking like a play icon. And let's go ahead and tween. Actually, let's go ahead and tween all of these the same to start. Ease in out cubic. And let's take a peek. So you can see this this uh, path morphing is happening and that's it's pretty nice I think I think I like that that's good we don't want this to start until the user actually presses the button so we're going to go ahead and add a frame action here just a pause and now the, the timeline will actually stop um, and then once we finish here, we're actually going to make those bars dance while the, the, the playback is happening. So let's go ahead and do that first here with the, the play pillars. What are they called? Oh yeah, the morphs. Okay, so hmm, let's see. Let's go out here and then just change the the scale a little bit on stage and then we'll go back and change that to one so um, and then a little further out we will change that back to one as well so we will tween these and take a peek let's do everything cubic just to keep it simple so that is dancing now go ahead and do that with the other one and um, since this is going to be looping, I want them both to finish here where they, they started at, at scale Y of 1. Um, so I'm not going to have this one change until uh, this offset position here um, when the other one's changing. So let's go ahead and do that now. And we'll just approximate that as well. I don't what do we take the other one down to? A lot lower. Point let's just make this uh, 0.75 and then other one 0.75 as well. Um, and then once again we will create some more scale Y one keyframes and tween both of those in the same manner. And now we should have dancing, dancing pause pillars. And uh, yeah, we want those to keep dancing and we don't want to manually create uh, a multitude of keyframes and tweens to do that. So we're just gonna say as soon as this section hits this final keyframe here, we'll just jump back in time to frame 18 and do it again. So it'll just keep looping through this section here and the way we'll do that is by adding a frame action here on 36 and we're going to jump back to frame 18 so we'll just say go to and play and then the frame number is 18 and now that section will loop um, yeah so this is looking good it's going to pause on zero and then we need to tell it to go to and play one on a click so let's go ahead and put that listener on the full button um, go up to the, the the lightning bolt icon press that and then we're gonna choose click as our trigger and then we're gonna go to and play frame one 
and this will actually start the animation. So let's let's go ahead and at least make sure this is working so far. And it looks like it is. That's great. So now all we need to do is to create the the final piece of this animation, which is to actually do the reverse of of uh, this section here, and instead of uh, animating to the pause state, we're going to go from the pause state to the play state. So we're just going to create a bunch of keyframes out here um, on these pieces we're going to animate because we're going to start here and animate to the play state. So I'm going to jump back to frame zero and grab my points for the play icon and then about the same distance, ideally the exact same distance. We're going to paste those in there and voila, it's a triangle now. Um, and then what else do we need to do? We need to get the rotation and the position. So it looks like the position actually doesn't change for X. So those are unnecessary. Um, and what was it? It was one, it was uh, two, 244, I believe. And the rotation, I'm gonna copy and paste out here. And um, I think that is it. Let's go ahead and tween these, ease and out, cubic. And now, as we scrub through time, we are good to go. Um, of course, I think it's okay if that fades out instantly. Well, let's go ahead and fade it out. So that other pillar on the right, we're going to just fade out here. Yep, that looks better. All right, so now all we need to do is change the logic so that this actually toggles between playing and pausing. If the button is playing, then we will play these frames from 37 to 53. If it's not playing, then we'll play these frames from 1 until 18. So to keep track of whether or not this is playing, we're going to create a state. We're going to call it is playing, and it will be false to begin with. And then we'll change this logic to do a few things here. So we said if it is playing, if it is playing, we'll want to um, play from 37. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and play from 37. And if it's not, we'll play from frame one. So let's just write a quick uh, if statement here. If this dot state that is playing, then we will do this and otherwise we will play from frame one. And the other thing we need to do is to change this state every single time it's clicked so it actually switches between the two. And we'll do that with a change state. And we're gonna change is playing and we'll just change it to the opposite of whatever it was. All right, so that's all we need to do. And I believe we might be done here. That's looking good. All right, cool. Well, we have successfully wrapped up this tutorial. I will go ahead and publish this and I will make the link available on this video. And from that link, you can fork the project so you can uh, create a copy of it and pull it down and make it your own and, and investigate it. Um, and uh, yeah, let us know what you think. And thanks for watching. And please let us know what you'd like to see in the future.